Good early evening, everybody. It's Lorraine Alternative Homesteading, September 25, 2024. And um, thank you, everybody, who watched the last video about um, what percentage of the prison population are innocent because uh, an innocent man was executed yesterday. Um, so a couple of you guys said that, oh no, it's, you know, more like 80% of the population of the prison population that's innocent. Um, I looked it up online and the innocence, uh, project, um, advocates for, uh, for prison reform said it's basically 1% of the prison population, um, but that was back in the 1980s, okay? So it's it's probably exactly the percentage that Chad GPT said, closer to 10%. Um, I would say, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing it's more like 30 or 40% these days, I think with a high prison population rate. But then I was curious, because I didn't know. I mean, this is kind of a new topic for me. Who funds prisons in the United States and who owns them? So in the United States, prisons are funded and owned by a combination of public, government, and private entities. And I never knew that. I never knew that there were private entities that were owning the prisons. So here's a breakdown of who funds and owns the different types of prisons. So funding. Public prisons are funded by taxpayer dollars through federal, state, and local governments. These funds come from the federal government for federal prisons run by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And then there are state governments. Each state funds and operates its own prison system for individuals convicted of state crimes. And then there are local governments. Counties or municipalities operate jails for smaller detention facilities for individuals awaiting trial or serving short sentences. As far as ownership, Public prisons are owned and operated by government agencies such as the Federal Bureau of Prisons, which is BOP, for federal facilities, the state departments of corrections for state-run prisons, and the local sheriff's office or county governments for jails. Public prisons are the majority in the United States and are directly accountable to the public through elected officials. And then there are private prisons. Then this is new. I, I never, never knew about this. Private prisons. The funding for private prisons is funded by government contracts. The federal or state government pays pr private prison companies to house inmates typically at a negotiated per inmate per day rate. Now, I guess I would imagine that if somebody's incarcerated in a private prison and it's negotiated per inmate per day rate, that exonerating somebody who's innocent would mean that they'd be losing money on that person. And just a guess. So private prisons receive funds from federal contracts. The federal government contracts with private companies to operate some detention facilities, including immigrant detention centers. Uh, I don't know. Uh, are they doing a good job at that? I don't know. I, I heard that they're taking over Maine now. Um, state and local contracts. Some states and municipalities also contract with private companies to operate prisons or jails. As far as ownership goes, private prisons are owned and operated by for-profit companies. Some of the largest companies in the sector are Core Civic, which is C-O-R-E-C-I-V-I-C, -E -I -I formerly Corrections Corporations of America, CCA. It's one of the largest private prison operators in the United States. Never heard of them. <laughs> GEO Group. Is another major private prison operator also involved in running immigration detention centers. Great job, doing a great job there. Management and Training Corporation, MTC, 
a smaller but still significant player in the private prison industry. Private prison companies typically own the facilities they manage or lease them from the government. They profit from government contracts to house inmates and often argue that they can operate more efficiently than the government-run facilities. So why private prisons exist? Private prisons were introduced in the 1980s as a way to manage the rapid increase in the prison populations due to the quote-unquote war on drugs and stricter sentencing laws, mandatory minimums. Private companies entered the market claiming they could reduce costs for state and federal agencies while managing overcrowded prisons. So there's some controversies around these private prisons. Of course there would be. <laughs> private prisons have been the subject of significant controversy for several reasons. Their profit incentives. Critics argue that private prisons have a financial incentive to keep incarceration rates high, leading to concerns about the ethical implications for, of profiting from imprisonment. Number two, conditions and treatment. Some reports suggest that conditions in private prisons may be worse than in public prisons with higher rates of violence, understaffing, and inadequate health care. And then there's the political influence. Private prison companies have lobbied for harsher sentencing laws and other policies that could increase incarceration rates, which would benefit their businesses. Now, there's the difference between public and private prisons. Public prisons are government-owned, funded by taxes, and accountable to the public. Private prisons are owned by for-profit corporations funded by government contracts and primarily accountable to shareholders. Okay. Funding contracts, federal and state budgets. Governments allocate billions of dollars each year for corrections, which includes both public and private prisons. Billions of dollars. Government contracts. Private prisons receive contracts to house certain number of inmates at an agreed-upon rate. These contracts can be highly lucrative for the companies involved, but they're often scrutinized for how the funds are used. So now there's some current trends. In recent years, there's been a growing public and political pressure to move away from the use of private prisons. For example, in 2021, President Biden signed an executive order directing the Department of Justice to phase out the use of private prisons for federal, federal inmates, although this order did not apply to immigration detention centers or state prisons. In some states like California and Illinois, they have passed laws aiming to phase out or reduce the use of private prisons. While private prisons make up a relatively small percentage of the total popula prison population, which is around 8% in the U.S., they are a significant part of the federal immigration detention system where private companies manage a large portion of detention facilities. Well, I thought that was interesting. So um, what I'll do is I'll link this, this video to the, the other one so that you can reference them back and forth. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I mean, again, this is a new topic for me. And it's only because um, of that innocent man being um, exterminated yesterday and um, how disturbing it was that there were so many people on his side trying to, to get a stay and um, they wouldn't hear of it. Can't believe it. It's horrible. But anyway, um, please remember to hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel grow, get the message out there, and I will talk to you soon.